look, when starting any type of business, um, you know, you have to overcome a lot of fear, right? Mm. You know, especially a new venture, uh, especially a, a creative adventure. Right. For, uh, so, Mike, another question is, you know, did you experience this as you were dreaming up the label and co? Uh, or, um, and if so, like, what did you do to kind of push past those fears to make this label, this dream, this vision of yours a reality? Yeah, the biggest solution for me to uh, to to being um, fearful of doing something is is both patience and information. Uh, and I, and I think before in my life, uh, as you learned from the bass guitar story, I just kind of jumped into things and I was like, Oh, cool. Sure. It'll be fine. And most yeah. of the time it was. And then the 1% of time where it wasn't, it was like, ah, oh, shit, I really learned from that. I need to be able to grow. Uh, but this is, this, this started to come to be, uh, about mid year last year as things were at least in a studio still going. A lot of the work that I do, uh, is one-on-one -on -one with artists, uh, one-on-one -on -one with songwriters. So we were able to find ways to go get tested, you know, be able to get into the studio together and have long stretches of time where I was working on projects during the last year. So uh, in addition to being able to continue to, to produce and write through the last year, I had a lot of extra time to kind of think about what's next. And I remember bringing up to my fiance, Elizabeth, a lot towards June, July of last year being like, I feel like things are moving in the right direction, um, but I really need to be conscious of what my next step is. Um, and I didn't know what that was. It was just this blank canvas that like, I really need to be sure. present and open to it and whatever kind of walks into my life will be the right thing. So, um, over the last couple of years, I've had conversations with publishing companies that have been enjoyable. I really like the people there, but the business has never made sense to me. Um, and I found that I couldn't find a home. <laughs> and, uh, so I continued, you know, pushing down the path of, of doing pop music in Nashville, which up until the last year was something where it's like, Oh, cool. But you also make country, right? Like you, you do that, you get by right. doing that sort of thing. And the, the case was, it wasn't, I was my building my entire, um, uh, discography off of artists that were doing pop music. And I think it was hard for people to believe. So continuing to preach the message of that was something that was, uh, not necessarily easy to people that have been so institutionalized into the way that Nashville works. Um, and so having conversations with companies being like, no, I really believe in pop music. I really believe in the artists that I'm working with and them being like, yeah, but you'll also do this other stuff. And it's just, it's always been a hard no Yeah, because I, I, I really, I, and a large part of why ANCO has developed has really just been the viewpoint of what does Nashville look like 10 years from now? And if it's anything like the trend of the last few years has been, it's just continually moving in this direction of whether it's pop or whether it's genreless, like there's just so many areas of music that continue to expand. So long story short, uh, I'm, I'm sitting there trying to figure out what's next and thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And towards the end of last year, I brought on, um, uh, an admin company for my publishing to just take things over, make sure things are being cared for. I begin to start having conversations with them. They're like, hey, if you ever want to sign some writers, like this is something that we could take on, we would have capacity for. And I was like, never thought wow. about that. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, yeah, that's a vision down the road, but you know, like, eh, not right now. And I continued to simmer, simmer on it some more. And I was like, wait a second, I could do this. There's writers that I love working with. There's, um, there's artists that I love working with that I think I could really put into... Uh, you know, it's sort of an incubator sort of situation where there, there's a couple artists from uh, Clemson, South Carolina that I worked with a couple years ago. They came to Nashville uh, for a little internship, uh, per se, uh, a couple a couple summers ago. They were still deep in college, uh, starting to make some songs, and they would come into the studio a few times a week and show me what they were working on. I'd give some feedback, give some thoughts. We'd write some songs. And it was really cool to see them go from being guys that were making music in their dorm rooms to they they signed a deal with the orchard two months ago which is awesome for them you know it's just killer changing their lives they're graduating school and getting out into the world not saying that's all due to me but i really enjoyed being part of the process of helping them refine what they were working on so mm -hmm. it started to come into view that i, I really enjoy playing the role of being a mentor and and seeing what Others don't, you know, I love betting on people. I love betting on creative people uh, because you can really see their trajectory uh, just skyrocket when they have someone that's championing them and being, you know, the voice of reason when something isn't great and just being like, Hey, like, I think you can do better because I know you're capable of it. Um, so I've, I found myself stepping into more of that role casually. Um, and so, so as the year started to go on, it was like, how can I 
formally structure something that would make sense for just creating a space for artists to show up to, you know, and a large part of moving to the new studio, which you've seen, Steve, has been beautiful having, studio, by the way. Thank you very beautiful, much. Beautiful, man. Has, is having more room for there to be more writers in, you know, obviously during COVID we couldn't, but now that the world is opening up a little bit more to have uh, more people flowing in and making it more of a transient sort of thing where there's a lot of really great um, creative energy coming in and out of the doors and a lot of collaborations that you wouldn't expect happening. Um, and I just wanted to create a, a, a company that could champion the music that I see being uh, extremely relevant 10 years from now. I don't think it is right now, you know, and I think that's the battle that a lot of uh, artists in this town that are wanting to make music that are outside of the specific genres that are incredibly supported here. They haven't had a lot of support. There's a few boots on the ground from labels that are thinking that way in the pop train and the rock train and, and, and things like that. But for the most part, there's still not an industry basis here. So it takes people like me that love this kind of music that want to create a space for artists like that to plant our boots on the ground and go, no, I'm not going to LA. I love LA. It's great. I will go get a tan, but I, I'm, I'm long on Nashville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love how you said plant our boots in the ground, a country yeah. term to support pop Oh my music. gosh. I how, love how, it. You, how better, you better too long.